protein prediction part one. On structure, I see several faces who sort of have seen lectures before. Uh, I excuse myself for, to them because a couple of slides in the, at least in the first two lectures will be repetitive to them. Come in. Thank you. Is the door open? I think you might have lost another student because it's uh, locked for push access. Oh. Uh, did you open it? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Should I test it? Yeah. No. It's no, not. It locks. And why is that? There used to be a way to do that. That's one way to do it. Thank you. Um, I'm on camera, that's why I don't want to react to what you just, did, just said with your smile uh, to that situation. It's, it's remarkable how simple things are complicated um, in life. People who have not attended this lecture, two things. Please help me to have a lecture that we all enjoy by asking questions, by interrupting, by doing whatever you can to put, it, put yourself into this lecture. Secondly, we will have a recording. We will have a recording if and however, only if at least five people are in the room. Uh, if not five people are in the room, we have to see what we, what we do. Okay, computational biology, bioinformatics, what's the difference for the people who have not taken the lecture before? Or a similar lecture, so there are at least two faces in the three faces in the room, four faces in the room. Um, so if you don't belong to those, the group of those four, what's the difference for you? You study it, or you study both of it. When you say I study bioinformatics, people don't understand immediately, but if you say I'm a computational biologist, they have a good understanding really? of this group. You experience that? Yes. That's interesting. Uh, okay, but what is what's the is is that where it ends for you? So is is there a way in which you do, do you see any differential meaning for them, for the terms? Do you or anybody else? Again, four four phases are excluded, and they know who they are. Anybody? Yeah. Well, due to my knowledge of computational biology, as I'm studying biomedics, I could feel that. <laughs> <laughs> he studies computational biology and he's in the same study section as you. Anyway, yeah? I, I study bioinformatics too. I just thought it was a semantic thing. Yeah? Yeah, I, I feel like bioinformatics is more about structuring data, whereas computational biology is more about gathering data and learning. Computer aid, manner. That's an interesting way of defining it. So there are. Oh, god darn, I, I pressed on Morton. Um, so one way in which you can sort of define it, uh, or some words that come to some people's mind are these here. Uh, so in which case, in fact, so if you go to the US, then the, they tend to say that the structuring of data, anything that has to do with having data in a database, putting data in the database, and curating data in a database, is bioinformatics, while developing the algorithms that sort of do alignments that compare data, uh, that is sort of more the computational biology. That's the US view of it. In Europe, the, the view, bioinformatics is a term that comes historically from France, uh, or bioinformatique, uh, but ultimately, in, in Europe, there's this feeling much more that, that what you said. Wh whatever works better for whoever I talk to is fine. Bioinformatics is no problem whatsoever. I study bioinformatics, I study computational biology, it's the same thing. In the US, uh, by saying I studied bioinformatics, you should go to the US if you want a postdoc there, or a pre-doc, uh, do a PhD there, and say that I studied computational biology. Okay. This is a different way of entering the door than I studied bioinformatics. So you are a slave to know who knows how to handle databases. That's not the angle you necessarily want to get into. Uh, you want to tell them, yes, I also understand databases. I have done courses in software engineering of databases. But actually, I do much more than that. Okay. 
So in, if you speak to people in the US, you're a computational biologist. If you speak to people in Europe, it doesn't matter. If you speak to other people, obviously one of the two is different. I've never heard that. I find that very interesting. All our talks will be available, or my talks will be available. I, I try to, I'm not really promising. I do my best to have every single uh, talk available before the talk as a PDF on, on our websites. Today's talks well, are available. Remember yes. Put this uh, thing back. Uh, life is diverse. Uh, how does life work? What's the idea of this? You're most likely you have all seen this image of Leonardo da Vinci. So why are there these circles and these these squares? What's the idea of that image? Anybody? So Leonardo's idea is essentially an idea that comes from the Greeks, uh, which is ultimately the idea that by mapping we, everything upon simple shapes, spheres, uh, squares, and simple shapes, we can understand sort of the harmony of the universe. Okay? And that is what this image somehow means. Man is part of the universe, and I can understand it if I understood all of these spheres, these maps. Okay? Uh, in physics. Today we don't think this way anymore as far as, as man is concerned. Uh, harmony and, and simple shapes may still work, but what we do believe today is it is a level lower, right? It's sort of cells. That It's not simple shapes. Uh, it's not circles or squares. It is the cells that count. But still, that is not really what is coming to life. What is coming to life? And I'm not talking about the principles. We will get to that, to that in a minute, or in a few minutes. Uh, but sort of as a material uh, coming to life is, of course, yeah, amino acids. For instance, one part of it. But uh, and an amino acid alone is not life. So essentially, a protein would be a unit of life if you if you want, or DNA, right? Uh, but amino acids and, and nucleotides is, is fair enough. It's a fair enough start. And in fact, if you sort of look at it in terms of an innovation flow or the central dogma of molecular biology, uh, then DNA is sort of the information that is translated, and again there's a loop uh, going back here, uh, the RNA is an intermediate step, and from there we go to the protein that creates the amino acid. The protein is in fact the machinery of life, and four nucleotides, four nucleotides, 20 amino acids, and that, by the way this is uh, the docking of the last step here, translation. Uh, proteins do exist on very different scales, and that gets us into images. And images is a theme that I'm going to carry for this week, because ultimately we always imagine the way we think that a protein looks in three-dimensional structure. And it's so intuitive because we can actually somehow look at it on the screen. But it's an image, it's a model, it's an assumption, okay? Uh, and I'm going to flash a few images in front of you. Science, the scientific procedure is about, you come up with a hypothesis and then you have a scientific procedure about going about finding whether it's right or wrong. But this hypothesis sometimes can be an intuition, okay? So you're going to see a couple of things. Just sh sh get out with your intuition. What is similar on this one here? Where would, if, if you had to group, if you had to pair, if you had to find two pairs, where would they be? Yes, that's that's a so this. Uh, by the way, in the uh, I just flashed this in a, to a group of, of computer scientists, and I found something that I somehow never never thought about. Uh, I, dumb as you are, a person simply said, "This is one group because they are all crystals," uh, and this, that's a very 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 valid point. The colors show. Uh, color is another way uh, of, of valid point. That is sort of this one here, right? Um, and, and more or less the other one. Uh, another way of doing it is you look for material, right? This is silicon. Uh, this is glass. Uh, by the way, is glass a crystal? Not exactly. Why not? Glass is glass. It's different. It's more like a liquid, sort of amorphous. And it sort of flows away or what? No, it's just. The order range is different between crystals. Yes, that's true. But it's like a liquid means it flows? Yeah, 
No, a man just made a It does. Structure. It does actually flow. Okay. When you look at church windows, uh, you see in the bottom. Uh, when you look at very, very, very old windows, and typically church windows are the oldest windows that you see without being broken. Uh, so at the bottom of it, they are thicker, because glass actually flows. It actually is a liquid. It's only uh, that way uh, because I read that um, it was just because they weren't able to make perfectly um, parallel glass. And so let's, w let's, wait a few, let's wait with our glasses. If, if they ever sustain the next 400 years, let's see how they look in 400 years. No, so glass really is uh, amorphous, as you said. It's not quite a liquid, but it has, it has a different structure than a crystal. And in fact, it does have metastable states. Uh, and it does flow. Uh, so gravity acting upon glass, when you sit in front of this glass for 40 minutes, nothing will change. Maybe for 40 days, nothing will change. But for 400 years, I bet you something is going to change. Uh, so it's amorphous here, totally right on. Uh, so this is, this is a diamond, this is graphite. And the point here is that ultimately what distinguishes those two, you could say color, uh, but ultimately is the, the way the lattice is organized uh, is the, under, the, the molecular shape underneath, underneath uh, that gives a different thing. So typically this is what we try to organize in chemistry in a periodic table um, and in a periodic table you see there are many 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 elements we are diverse beings which molecules dominates our body? Water. How much? As weight percentage, or weight percentage, I think about 70 to 80. Well, it's a bit less, but you're right on. 50 to, to 70 percent is a 70 to 80 is a little bit high, but almost exactly the ballpark, okay? Uh, so that clearly shows you what is the most common element in our body, right? It's oxygen and hydrogen. But now you see, well, the green ones here are 11 that make up 96.5% uh, of the body weight. Uh, and there's one green one up there. What, what could that be? Uh -huh. And that one? You named that one right? Uh, almost. Yeah, that's good, 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 good. Yes, uh, but then essentially we potassium comes down here, is one of the major ones. But you see how much, so the, 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 the top six, how little is left, yet you know that you need the diversity of all the, uh, of all the materials, the vitamins and, and whatnot. Um, what's that? Staphylococcus was not right, this is a bacterium, that one is right, this one is E. coli. Uh, and that one is also E. coli. That's sort of the, the it's a different view of E. coli. Uh, and here we have the Streptococcus. Salmonella. And that is? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how people, I mean, it's, it, this is something interesting for me. So you said the word uh, in, in your mind, obviously. It's formulated on your lips, but it, you said it again on them. Anyway, uh, it is an avian bird, virus, bird flu. Uh, and this is another kind of virus. This is the HIV. And this. And the lecture before, I got somebody who got that right. This is just this mechanism here. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so th this, this slide has gone in front of, uh, at this point, over 800 people, right? Uh, and three people now have guessed it. And they were all today. What is this? You know, it's the weather, right? This is Velcro, obviously. Um, it comes from Georges de Mestral, who invented it, walking his dog. Uh, because the burr seed was stuck in the fur of the uh, dog. And it essentially is the same sort of idea that is realized in medical. Bacteria differ in shape, they differ in the way they live, in the, whether they live in communities, whether they live alone. Uh, they de de completely differ in terms of the environment that they need. Uh, what is common between them? 
is that they in fact all are single cellular organisms. Even living in communities, they are still single cellular. Right? Uh, and ultimately, the, the way we imagine this is we have a, a, a wall around the cell, or several walls, two in an outer and inner wall, plasma membrane, uh, and inside we have all the machinery of life. The DNA, and the proteins sort of mixed in there, right? In a eukaryotic cell, however, you have a substructure. You have different compartments, and you know, for instance, the mitochondria are sort of relics from the bacterial world. Uh, now, do we carry bacteria? We, human? Yes. Sure. Well, we are sick, right? Yeah. A relative. Huh? A relative is sick. Do we carry bacteria when we're not sick? We actually live in symbiosis with them. Yes, we live in symbiosis with, with bacteria. Uh, so can, you, can anybody in the room give me a, name, a number for this? How much of what you see is bacterial? I mean, I'm talking about this one here. One I'm not the belly. Hmm? One to six, like one part means six parts bacterium. Uh, now this, this is a, an interesting answer because it depends actually how, how you look at it. So one way of putting it in, in my weight is roughly two kilo of uh, bacteria is one way of, of estimating it. It's not quite clear at this moment what the number really is. Nobody has really cut them out and, and, and measured, right? Uh, and you're, you're smiling, but the major thing, so uh, the important point is they are all over the body from the teeth to the skin to the, to the gut and sort of in terms of mass for the two kilo measurement the gut is the major part here uh, and the, the way the gut is shaped is actually unclear whether, how, how much there really is and it may be a factor of two or three in which they are wrong. So I've heard recent estimates that, that may suggest very different numbers just by not knowing how big the gut is actually. Uh, but ultimately there is a large variety of bacteria in us, they are living with us, they are important for us and they are changing during the day. They are changing according to how happy we are, whether I gave you the news that you can do your other lecture or not, your bacteria change. Yes, you were? I, I was actually um, thinking about, because this is where I got the number from, uh, genetic material. Yes, and here's the other way of looking at it. So I could ask, in terms of, if I sequence the whole thing that is in front of you, okay, and then I sort of, uh, sort of cut it down to a number of genes, okay, then by, by far the largest amount of genome, or genes, is bacteria that you will find here. Uh, that's one way of putting it. So most genetic material that comes, most, uh, not most genetic material, but if, if I sort of, most genes that come out if you sequence everything that is in front of you, most of that will be bacterial genes. Okay, that's one way of putting it. But even if you asked what are most cells, even most cells are bacterial. Because the eukaryotic cells, I have 65 trillion cells, it's a lot, but the bacterial cells are so much smaller. Okay? Even most cells are, are bacterial. Uh, so by that, by a variety of ways you can sort of come up with different ratios, what is me, what is, what is bacteria, and they're all right and wrong. Uh, but the important message here really, there's an, a whole universe uh, to be explored, and they, to be explored because really the way that changes and the why that has to do with the proteins, the protein machinery, is something yet to be discovered, or yet to be characterized. Again, common are the uh, DNA, the genes. Uh, where do we have genes? Clear for you guys now? And where do we people have genes? It's to, it's to, I, I, is there any way in which we can sort of find a way that something that is totally trivial for you that... So, from, uh, let, let me describe the problem of, of me as a teacher. The faces that I see when nobody knows anything and the faces that I see when everybody knows it is totally trivial, they look alike. It's, it's, I, I, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not funny for me. Uh, it's really complicated, so I need a sign. I need, I need somebody to help me out and say, trivial, not trivial. Uh, is, is there any way in which the code? Well, I don't know if you can say if it is trivial because there is no uh, definition of a gene. Everybody is like, fighting about it, what well, is actually a gene. But I guess what you wanted to hear maybe was in the cell core. 
yeah, in the nucleus, right? But not quite, only is also the mitochondria. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry for the image here. Down, maybe you can sort of, this is the only slide for which Dimitri was right, I should have closed the blinds. Uh, here, the blue is the nucleus. The red is, in fact, mitochondrial DNA. And those green ones are the mitochondria. Uh, this is a mistake here, I should go out. Uh, now, the, the other part here is, again, in terms of number of uh, things, you all know that the nuclear genome is small, yet the highest amount of, of DNA information is somehow in the mitochondria, because there are 100 per cell, while there is only one nuclear genome per cell. Uh, so again, the, it's, that's why people also sequence mitochondria. Um, so again, to put that into perspective, uh, of the cell, to put it into perspective of the dogma. The protein synthesis, um, well, again, uh, transcription, post-transcription, uh, translation, post-translation, post-translation modifications. Um, let's get into this quiz. What is the smallest building block of life that can replicate? <laughs> 